Yeah, they actually went there. Hey guys, I'm Rebecca from Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 darkest moments on Family Guy. You know, this is going to sound really weird. This is going to sound really weird, but I really want you to do it, okay? W what? I want you to pierce my ear. Let's do it. You mean it? Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. What does that mean? We're looking at jokes or events from Seth MacFarlane's animated series that made us gasp in shock and disbelief, but also like laugh usually. You'll see. Check it out. Uh, what's for dinner? Play-Doh spaghetti. Oh. What? No, no, it's, it's nothing. Just had Play-Doh spaghetti last night. And that's all we had last night. Number 10, everything with John Herbert. That's a nice muscly throwing arm you got there. Uh, thanks. Got a nice tip for you right here in my pocket for my arthritis. Why don't you reach in there and fish it out for yourself? Not many shows regularly feature an openly pedophilic character. Herbert, the pedophile in question, is the Griffin's neighbor, and he's got a thing for young boys, including Chris. The lisping creepo made his debut in To Love and Die in Dixie by inviting Chris to reach into his pants. He hasn't gotten any more pleasant from there. Oh, gosh, gosh, by gosh, it's a brand new paper boy. That's a mighty full sack you're carrying. Piss off, you perverted old freak. Oh, we got a fighter. Herbert loves to watch Chris eat hot dogs, spies on him through the window, attempts to catch children in a butterfly net. At one point, he even asks Brian for an ice cream truck. Super creepy. I'm, I'm sorry, what? You know, with colorful pictures of ice cream treats. And it plays a tune that's fun for the young children. Number nine, Prom Night Dumpster Baby. Hey, what are you doing out here? Don't you want to dance? Sure. I'm just a prom night dumpster baby. Family Guy is known for their musical numbers, but Prom Night Dumpster Baby is a standout. We see a young woman throw something away at prom, and quickly we learn it's a baby. A baby joined by other dumpster babies for an admittedly catchy musical number, complete with a 40-piece orchestra. Not many shows could do much with this subject matter, let alone a full song and dance. But then again, Family Guy isn't like most TV shows. However, there is no denying that Prom Night Dumpster Baby is a shocking and disturbing scene, particularly due to its real-world ramifications. My fanny needs a blanket and somebody to spank it. I miss my mom. But she's at the prom. So I'm a Prom Night Dumpster Baby. Number 8. Terminal News. Well, I'd better tell Cleveland. I got a knack for delivering bad news. I don't know how to tell you this, Mr. Devaney. So I'll let these guys do it. You have eight. Shocking Family Guy musical numbers are nothing new. They've been going strong since season four. In the fourth season episode, The Cleveland Loretta Quagmire, Peter is seen with a barbershop quartet giving a man his AIDS diagnosis through song and dance. The crew admitted that the joke was meant to be tasteless in the DVD commentary, and their intentions were realized, as several AIDS organizations protested the song and its content. Family Guy goes to dark places, and cheerfully singing about a deadly pandemic and jokingly call it full-blown AIDS is undoubtedly one of its darkest moments. You've got the AIDS! Number 7. Stewie gets revenge on Olivia and Victor. Stewie, uh, this is Victor. We did a Flintstones vitamins commercial together. 10, Ten million, million strong, strong and, and growing. growing. <laughs> <laughs> we know Stewie is psychotic, but we didn't think he'd ever go this far. In the episode Chick Cancer, Stewie reunites with his old musical pal Olivia Fuller when she returns to Quahog. However, Stewie later finds Olivia playing with her friend Victor, and feeling betrayed, he sets the playhouse on fire with Olivia and Victor inside. Is that smoke? <gasps> Idea for a farce. Cheating wife and pompous ass burned alive. This obviously isn't meant to be taken seriously, but watching two toddlers be set on fire makes for some incredibly difficult viewing. While Olivia would return in season 15, viewers went 10 years with no reason to think Stewie wasn't a murderer. You know, the last time I saw you, you were... Burning in a cardboard house. Yeah, burning in a cardboard house, yeah. Number 6. Brian's Fate. Brian, look out! Unlike its animated peers, Family Guy isn't known for packing dramatic punches. But Brian's death certainly got the tears flowing. In Life of Brian, Brian is run over by a car. 
His injuries are horrific and sad enough, but then the Griffins learn that they'll have to put him down. Brian says a touching farewell before passing away. You, you've given me a wonderful life. While Stewie would eventually save his pal with the power of time travel, his initial death was both terribly sad and painfully dark, especially for those who've gone through similar situations with their beloved pets. Wow, Stewie, thank you for saving my life. You know, a lot of other families would have just gotten a different dog and moved on. Oh, oh, we, we, could, we could never do something like that, Brian. Number five, Brenda's boyfriend. She's a hot piece of ass, and from the looks of it, she likes it rough. That's my sister, Brian. Her boyfriend has been beating her mercilessly. The last thing she'd want right now is to be objectified. Oh, God, I'm, I'm really sorry. I got a deaf brother. You want to make fun of him, too? Family Guy often covers touchy and dramatic subjects, but it usually does it with surrealism and or tongue-in-cheek humor. Not so with Brenda's abusive boyfriend, Jeff. In the episode Jerome is the New Black, Quagmire is sheltering his sister from the abuse when Jeff shows up with a baseball bat. You feel good about your sex joke earlier, Brian? He's savagely beating her again, you hear that? Yeah, I'm not deaf. Oh, oh, what, like my brother? Boy, you have no class! Yeah, that's the guy's brother, man! Their story is given significant attention in the episode Screams of Silence, the story of Brenda Q, as the Griffins and Quagmire attempt to save the submissive and defensive Brenda from her relationship. It's all taken unusually seriously, and their story can be a little too realistic and upsetting for some to handle. Wow. I guess he's really gone. <laughs> I kind of want to kill somebody else now. Number four, Stewie and Brian's Christmas home invasion. It's actually, it's kind of a funny story. <laughs> what the hell did you do? He was going to call the cops, man. You can't call the cops on Santa. Help me move this guy's body. Well, so much for holiday cheer. In the Christmas special Road to the North Pole, Stewie and Brian take on the role of Santa, when the real Santa is too sick and exhausted. But their first stop proves to be disastrous. All right, look, let's, let, let's just go. Right, right, we'll go. I, I, I'm just going to rewrap this bat for um, Johnny. Let me just clean his father's blood and hair off it. Daddy, I want a drink of water. Stewie attacks the father with a baseball bat, he and Brian physically attack the mother after she discovers his body, and they tie up their young daughter with duct tape. It's unclear if the two survived, but judging by the spilled blood, we're gonna say no. It's a horribly gruesome scene that perfectly highlights the show's penchant for shock value and excessive violence. All right, come on, let's get out of here. Number three, Brian's revelation. Just tell me, come on. No. Come on, please. <sighs> I keep it in case... I ever want to commit suicide, okay? Wow. The episode Brian and Stewie is a bit of an enigma. Not only is it light on the jokes, it also features just those characters while tackling some extremely heavy subject matter, like Brian's possible suicide. Sometimes it's, it's all too much. What is? Life, everything, just having the gun here, knowing there's a way out, it, it, it helps. Given that Brian is a staunch supporter of gun control, Stewie naturally asks him why he has a gun in his safety deposit box. Brian then reluctantly reveals that he's unhappy and finds comfort in the fact that he has a way out. While Peter has also broached the topic, Brian's scene is taken much more seriously and is arguably the show's most upsetting and dramatic sequence. I mean, I love you as one loves another person whom one simply cannot do without. Why? Well, I love you too, Stewie. Number two, Peter Griffin Jr. And you better be responsible tonight. I don't want a repeat of the last time I left you alone with one of our children. <sighs> it's just so horrible. The episode The Juice is Loose contains what is arguably the darkest cutaway in the show's history, and that is saying something. After Lois reminds Peter of what he did the last time he was alone with the children, the episode cuts to Peter Jr.'s grave. Peter explains that he thought shaking Peter Jr. would stop him from crying, and then in true Family Guy fashion, adds that he was kinda right. Only Family Guy can make a joke out of something like that and have it work. But even then, it's hard not to say they went too far. I'm sorry, Lois. I thought if I shook him enough, he'd stop crying. I was kinda right. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some dishonorable mentions. Mrs. Griffin, your husband has had a stroke. The left half of his body is completely paralyzed. Oh my god! Peter, sweetheart, how do you feel? Uh, had better days, Lois. Had better days. Huh. 
I was so busy not seeing color, I didn't see the raping either. Terry Shivo is kind of a libo. What a lively little bugger. Maybe we should just unplug her. Number one, Quagmire's behavior towards the Simpsons. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Oh, I gotta say, that was fantastic. What do you say we go back to your place for round two? Sounds good to me. They might be rivals, but this is just way too much. In the episode Movin' Out Brian song, a fake promotion for The Simpsons appears on screen. And things turn horrific when Quagmire appears and he forces himself on Marge off screen, only for her to like it and take him home. When Homer walks in, Quagmire shoots the entire family. You're amazing, Glenn! Oh, I just take a lot of pride in what I do. Hey, what's going on here? Unsurprisingly, Fox said no way and pulled the joke from the air. They later told the producers of both shows that they could no longer attack each other. The gag was eventually reinstated for the DVD release for all to watch in disbelief and disgust. Oh no! Who will pay for my saxophone lessons? Anyway, hit that like button and be sure to watch these related videos if you want to get that visual of the baby out of your head.